Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, it's Donnie coming at you with another tutorial in our process management series. In the previous video, we looked at a utility called Top, which allows you to view a dynamic display of what's going on with the processes on your Linux machine. But right after I did that, a viewer suggested that I do a lesson on HTOP. And HTOP is a lot newer utility than what the top is. Top is a really, really old program that's carried over from the dark days of Unix. And that's one of the reasons why it doesn't have a lot of the features that HTOP does. So for example, you see down here at the bottom that HTOP makes use of function keys. Well, back when top was invented, there was no such thing as function keys on keyboards. And uh, also, that's why on the early versions of top, on the older versions of Linux, you couldn't use your cursor keys you know, to navigate around because back when top was first invented, there was no such thing as cursor keys on keyboards. So it's kind of like the old VI text editor where you have to use just regular letter keys, you know, to navigate around because back when VI was first invented, you didn't have the cursor keys. Now, you know, newer versions of VI, you have that. You do have uh, use of the cursor keys and page down keys and what have you, but uh, the older versions you didn't. So same way with top, right? But uh, anyway, with the H top, it is a newer utility, as I said, but unlike the old legacy top, it's not installed on your system by default. So you have to install it yourself, either with apt install, if you're on a Debian system, or an Ubuntu system, as uh, I am on here. Uh, this is actually a Debian, which you can tell by the, the uh, host name. And... Uh, and of course, I think you can also tell that I use it for building Yocto images for the IoT. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, you have to install it. So uh, it's apt install, you know, with uh, your Debian or Ubuntu or DNF install. If you're on Fedora, yum install. If you're on CentOS or Red Hat, or zipper install. And with zipper, you can abbreviate stuff. But anyway, zipper install if you are on a SUSE machine. So anyway, whatever your favorite package manager commands are, just use that package manager command to install your HTOP. So anyway, one of the things we want to do here, too, is look at the man page for HTOP. It'll give us a little idea of what's going on with it. And up at the top, you see we have some command line options, like uh, you can delay updates. You can change the update interval, I guess you should say. Uh, you can start it up without color, because by default, as you saw, it's in color. That could be helpful for if you're on a terminal where the colors don't show up correctly. Now, not a problem here generally. Generally, the, the big problem with uh, color stuff not showing up correctly is if you have a back black ground and a program uses dark blue text. And that's one of the problems with the Vim text editor. If you have a dark black background, uh, you have to change the background, if possible, change it to white because that dark blue just doesn't show up well, right? But with the HTOP, it seems it doesn't use the dark blue, so you should never have to do that, probably. Uh, you can hit the H key to display a help message and exit. So you can do like HTOP-H, and it'll show the help message. You can show only the given... Uh, process ID numbers in this case. So uh, if you know what process ID numbers you want to look at, you can list them in a command. Do htop-p followed by the process ID numbers. And you can start it up with a certain 
uh, sort order, you know, depending on what column you want to sort on. You can just look at the processes of a given user, or you can just look at the version information, right? And then down here, we have the interactive commands. You have a lot of navigation commands. You can scroll and uh, scroll up and down, scroll right and left using your, your different cursor keys and uh, alt key combinations. And you can also, you can tag processes with the space bar, you know, for different reasons to either re-nice them or kill them. And hit the U key to untag all processes uh, that you have tagged and so on and so forth. I'm not going to list all of them, uh, but you can just go through this man page and look at all these different commands. And uh, then we, of course, we do have the function keys that you can use for different things. We'll take a look at that in a bit. You can uh, set CPU infinity and, and so on and so forth. Just lots of stuff there that you can do. And again, as I said, read the man page on your own and get a feel for all this stuff and just play around with it and see which ones of these commands you might really need because maybe in your particular shop, your particular uh, uh, machines, maybe you won't need all these features. But just look at them, play around with them, get a feel for what they do and get a feel for what you really want to see in a top or H-top display and just, hey, have a ball, right? Go to town. <laughs> and then down here, finally, we have uh, the explanations of the different columns. And there are a lot more columns listed here than what we see in a default top, or H-top display. And you can get a feel for what they will do for you and uh, the information that, will, that they'll give you by just reading through all of this. So, let's take a quick look then about how this stuff works. So let's go ahead and do our HTOP again. And one of the differences here that you see right off the bat is that with the normal top, the load averages are just for, are just showing for the aggregate total of your CPU cores. With HTOP, you don't have to hit the one key in order to see all the individual cores the way you do with top. So they're just showing up here by default and you have nice little bar graphs there for everything, for your CPU uh, usage, your memory usage, swap memory usage, all that kind of good stuff. And then over here you have the tasks and uh, their statuses, uh, kind of the same that you saw with the, uh, with the top load averages. Again, this is the aggregate load averages, or the cumulative load averages, I guess I should say, for the total number of CPU cores. And again, we got 12 CPU cores on this machine and uptime. So I've had it going for almost one hour. Now, uh, another weird thing here, I just now noticed, I didn't even think about it, is that the CPU cores in HTOP are numbered from 1 through 12 in this case. On regular top, they're numbered from 0 through 11. So I don't know why they did that, because everybody knows that the numbering system in computer terms starts with 0. So <laughs> I don't know why they started it here with 1. But anyway, here you see across the top row here, we have the column names. And they're pretty much the same column names that we saw in the regular top command. So process ID, the user, the priority, the niceness value, the virtual memory, and the, uh, the resident memory, and here the amount of actual system RAM that's being taken up, and so on and so forth, okay? So uh, again, pretty much the same columns there that you saw in a normal top display, and, uh, and again, if uh, you forget what all that stuff means, just go ahead and look at the man page. And anyway, we can use our cursor key. I'm using the right-hand cursor key here to cursor out to the right to get a better view of what is going on with all these very, very long 
uh, displays. I can use the down key, the down cursor key to cursor down. And that cursor key to cursor back up, so on and so forth, right? I can also hit the F1 key to look at my help screen. And so this might be a little bit handier than having to exit HTOP and look at the man page to look at the, the, uh, the different commands. And we can use the F2 key to do a setup. Okay, so uh, you see the way this works here is that we have, when we first pull this up, we have this meters here in this turquoise color, or actually we could say teal. I guess I should say teal since I live in Jacksonville, Jaguars country. Uh, but anyway, the way this works, I can just use my right hand cursor key to come over here and I can just cursor down here to whichever thing that I want to add. And you see that goes down below the screen. And let's say that I want to go ahead and add the host name. I can do that. Just hit the enter key to add that. And you see now that that is in the right hand column. You see that it's right there. So host name, Debian dash Yakdo. Yay. And uh, we could also add stuff over here to the left hand column if we wanted to. All right. But anyway, uh, Let's get back over here now. Okay, I've just added it to the left-hand column now. All right, so now it's over here. All right, so anyway, uh, let's go back over here to meters. We can also, uh, or to the setup column, and we can also change our display options. And here, oh, look at that. We can count our CPUs from zero instead of one. Well, we'll hit the space bar there, and Yay, zero instead of one. Starts with zero now, the way it should. And then we can come down here, we can change our colors, and we can also add to the columns. So we see down here the active columns, and we can go over here, and let's say that we want to see the children processes user CPU time. We can just go down there, and for this one, for some reason, instead of hitting the enter key, I gotta hit the F5 key. So hit F5, and add that. And then uh, we also want to see the children process at system CPU time. So we'll hit F5 there as well and add that. And then we hit the F10. Okay, now when you're done, you can see down here, you hit the F10 key and then that will save your new configuration. And I would love to be able to do that to show you what it looks like but I can't because unfortunately on this particular host computer, the F10 key will be intercepted by my screen recorder, so I can't do that. So I'm just gonna hit the Q key or the escape key and get back out, all right? So anyway, oh, it doesn't matter. You hit the escape key, it does the same thing. It saves it anyway. So I didn't need to worry about that F10 key. Yay. <laughs> and so anyway, so we see that we have our new columns right there, regardless. So anyway, that's good. And we got our host name, and we have our CPU cores are now labeled from zero to 11 as they should be. All right, so uh, that's that. We can also have the F3 key, which we can use to search for a particular process. And you see the search thing comes up there. And so we can do XMRig, for example. And you see there, it highlights the first instance of that. Oops. Better. My goodness. XM rig. There we go. And so you see the first uh, instance of that comes up there. But a better option would be to use the filter for with the F4 key. And so we can do XM rig, which is my... Crypto coin mining software, so you can see it come up there. And once we are there, we can use the the uh, space bar in order to tab all of these different, or, or tag rather, all of these different 
processes. So we can do space. Oops, that didn't work. There we go. The problem was I had one tagged already, so I need to need it to get out of that. Once you have the processes tagged, you can use the F8 key to make your niceness value more positive, which decreases the priority. Or if you've started edge top with pseudo privileges, you can use F7 in order to make the niceness value more negative, thus increasing the priority. Or you can use the F9 key to kill all these processes. But once you have them all tagged like this, you can perform the operation on all of the processes at once. So you don't have to go through and look for each and every one. So let's try F8 and we'll see what happens. And you see here that we can do this without pseudo privileges and we see that the niceness value is becoming more positive. And so every time I hit the F7 key, it's going to start coming up. See? And if I hit F7, you may hear the little gong noise coming up, meaning that I can't do it because I don't have root privileges, okay? So I've just increased that there, that niceness value to a level of eight. And so I can do that. And I, I could also, if I wanted to, hit the F9 key and kill all of those processes at once, which of course I don't want to do. So anyway, I just hit the Q key. I did not mean to do that. But anyway, that's all right. So we're back here and uh, you see there that the nicest value is still eight, the way I set it. We can also do the F5 key, which will give us a nice tree display. So this gives us a good display of the relationships between the parent processes and their children processes. And I can hit the escape key to get out of that. Actually hit the F5 again to get out of it. There we go. And I can use the F6 key in order to choose the column of which I want to sort. So let's sort by niceness value. Okay. So we have all of the, uh, the higher priority processes up here at the top now. So we see that Pulse Audio is uh, negative 11, which means it's a really, really high priority process. And we hit the F6 key again. And let's get it back here to CPU, the way it is by default. Okay. So anyway, I do believe that's pretty much it there for the HTOP utility. So as you can see, there's a lot more that you can do with it than you can with just the normal top utility, a lot more columns that you can see, and really easy to use, really easy to set up. And uh, so yeah, if you're system admin, definitely add this to your toolbox. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So anyway, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe, share it out if you want to hit that little bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos, and we'll see you next time.